Good morning, good morning, good morning. Quartz Fest Day 3. It's Tuesday, the 23rd of January, 2024. It looks like the rain is no more. And the clouds are starting to break up. It's uh, time to put the solar panels back out and get the K7AGE power station running. Well, I have my solar panels out. Yeah, as soon as it gets a little higher than the trailer <laughs> to the east of me, we'll get some photons flowing down the wires today. Now set it up higher, whatever height you want, and have it just warming up here. So you'll see that this afternoon about 3 o'clock, 3.30, you'll see a bunch of them and they're all up here, and that means they're just simmering in there, and they're getting really good and tasty. Yes, sir. I'm just going to mention that I've used it over the years a metal oil change pan. Yeah, I'm sure you can find them. Yes. Yep. No, I have. I have the same. Yes. But now let's talk about. All right, now I've cooked, and here's a dirty pot. Don't ever use detergent. Don't ever use any kind of soap. Why? Because the reason that cast iron pot works is you season it, and what seasoning is, you take lard or whatever, and you burn it in, and that forms a thin layer of, of carbon, pure carbon, around the inside. It does two things. Number one, it really makes the food taste better, but number two, it protects the, the metal from, from rusting and from uh, imparting any impurities in your food. Make sure that, that the inside stays pristine and just carbon. Well, the worst thing you can do then is you soak. Don't. The pioneers knew it all. They'd go get a handful of sand out of a wash and you scrub it. That was it. Well, nowadays, of course, they have this wonderful thing called a Scotch Brite pad. Same old, same old. Okay, Scotch Brite is what you want to do. And I, have I thought I would show you my power system inside the trailer here to make all the toys and the gadgets work. So everything is kind of based around my power box here. So I have a BioNO 30 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery in there. And this is a PowerWorks box. I bought it at a ham fest for like $99. When I saw it, I thought I can't buy the connectors that go on the box for that price. So standard with the box was one connector here with two power poles, a voltmeter as a switch. This is two USB sockets. And this is a cigarette lighter socket. And two binding posts. Post. I added another dual power pole socket. And on the side here I added another socket with a regular USB and a USB-C. So in this side socket, I usually have my USB-C and a USB cable. I never go in, there we go, first time. So I usually leave, leave two cables there, and therefore my Apple Watch and my iPhone, so it's a lightning and an Apple Watch connector. And so in one of the power pole connectors, is the power cable going over to, over to my IC7100. To charge the BioNO battery, I have their brick charger. This takes 110 in and gives you the DC voltage out for the charging. I'm not using this charger here because the cable that goes into the plug for the 110 volts, you can see at the strain relief, all the plastic insulation is all cracked and bare. In fact, when I turned on my plug strip with the generator the first day, this was throwing out some sparks, so no good. So I have this charger from Impulse Electronics. I bought it the uh, CPAC Hamfest this last June. It's a 116 watt DC lithium charger, eight to 36 volts in, 14.5 out, and it's selectable at two, four, or eight amps. And this is what the uh, backside Looks like so you can see the switch there. I can set how much current. So I charge my BioNO at four amps. Then it has a power pole for the output and another one for the input. 
So to use that in the trailer here, down by the floor, I have another pair of power pole outlets that's connected to the wiring for the motor for the slide. So that's pretty heavy wire. One of those cables goes to my CPAC, and the other one is for whatever else I need. I have a few of these little uh, power watt meter, volt meter, amp meter gizmos, um, which I have power pole connectors on both the uh, source and the load end. I bought about a half a dozen of these things a few years ago, put power poles on them, and I gave out a few of these here at uh, Quartzfest to some of the people in our gang. So I have it plugged in now. You can see it's lit up down there, red LED, and it's in the charging mode. So it's showing three, well, it's just going out of the constant current mode and going into the constant voltage. It was showing four amps. Now there's 1.7, 1.6, so it's dropping down. The voltage is 14.44. The battery says here 14.45. So there it is, less than an amp now. So that was kind of, the battery was basically fully charged and it's just going into its uh, trickle or standby mode. My laptop is charged using a USB power source. So, it, you know, it has its 110 volt brick. But if I don't have the generator going, I have an alternative. So this is a uh, charger I bought from PowerWorks. It takes 9 to 24 volts in, and it has a regular USB and a USB-C out. So I can use this to charge my laptop, but it complains about being a low current charger. But it will charge the laptop, and it will keep it basically battery neutral um, when I'm using the laptop. So that works good. So I can uh, have that plugged in, and you see it lights up to letting me know it's turned on. So that's three power pole things plugged in. This is an old Kensington 110-volt uh, AC inverter with a, with a USB. I've had this thing for, I don't know, many, many years. So it's, uh, it's another way I could charge the laptop top if I wanted to use the 110-volt uh, brick. I can use this for an AC charger to charge up an HT. And I can use this to power the TV in the trailer here when I'm out at a place somewhere like this. So it's kind of handy to have. And again, just another power pole connection. So this is a little voltmeter uh, module I put in an Altoids can and uh, built this many years ago. I think I have a video about this. And with a power pole connector, I can plug it into the battery, into the uh, plug down by the floor, look at the um, trailer battery or plug it in in anything so it's kind of handy to have have a switch on it to turn it off it's pretty bright at night it'll light the whole trailer up and then I usually leave a couple more USB cables in here this is a C that I used to charge this camera and this other one uh, I think I used to charge a flashlight or something so this becomes my power distribution uh, system <laughs> for the trailer uh, couple uh, power pole extension cables to get to different lengths of things but uh, this really works handy and I um, it's probably one of the better ham radio investments I ever made was putting was getting the battery and making putting this box together it is so handy to have one of the pots here that's on the uh, on the grill uh, please come and tend it because there's nobody here that knows what you're cooking and how long you need to cook it. So those of you who have pots in the grill, please come over and tend them. Okay, the schedule for this evening, the pet parade is, is well, you know, the potluck's going to be right after I make a few announcements here. The pet parade will be right here in Area 1 at uh, 515. And we have a new addition this year. If you look over here, Ham Bam is holding a leash for your pet puppy. <laughs> Now, I need to hear from you what you want to do with it. It was donated to us by a couple that uh, lost their puppy, and they were clearing things out, just like Lynn, Lynn and I had to do with our uh, puppy that passed back in June. Um, we can either give the puppy away as the first prize for the pet parade, or we can keep it and bring it out here every year and uh, let him and put it on the leash. <laughs> Frank says, who's going to clean up after it? Okay, raise a show of hands. How many say give it away to the prize winner? How many say keep it here every year? I guess the eyes have it. I want to recount. 
<laughs> we kept it up. So I apologize. They were greatly lost. It took them longer to find a campsite once they turned off of uh, 95 than it did from Phoenix to here. Uh, needless to say, uh, testing is going on. It's going on presently with uh, three additional applicants in the RV right now. The only way that keeps uh, amateur alive and thriving still in the hobby is keeping people licensed and getting beaten that ham radio drum, making sure that people have opportunities to test. They have materials like from Gordo and uh, show and be a good ambassador always is what we want to try to encourage you to do to always promote the hobby in a favorable light. Um, first impressions mean a lot to these people coming into the hobby. Okay, so I'd like to introduce Robert to share his ex uh, unique experience on his flight last night from Maine. Thank you very much, Stephen. So yeah, the, the, one of the unique things about remote testing is it's an excellent opportunity for the applicants to avail themselves. Is that better? There we go. You think I would know about RF. One of the unique things about remote testing is it makes it possible for applicants who don't have access to an in-person session, which is more people, well, you guys probably understand, but most people don't realize it. They have to wait months to get an in-person session. Whereas with just a computer and internet connection and Zoom, they can avail themselves of that opportunity to take advantage of this outstanding hobby. Well, also for volunteer examiners, it gives us an opportunity to give back to the hobby. Uh, like for myself, living up in the corner of New England, or as they say, I live in a dead end state. Um, I get to test with all of you people, and test people not only all over the country, but all over the world. It's a great opportunity. I've helped servicemen overseas and whatnot get their amateur radio licenses. And I have tested from some really unique places, not just here with you people, but also out on camping trips up in the north, of, north woods of Maine, or down in Ohio, or all these places off the back of a motorcycle. Again, giving back to the hobby. Well, last night, I had the opportunity that my aircraft had decent internet. So I was able to get on a test session and I actually tested three applicants from 34,000 feet over uh, Dallas Fort Worth. Yeah, it was a great opportunity. I got to welcome them to the hobby and it was a great thing and I signed the CSCEs. So they did get a high score. <laughs> So what a great opportunity for me and for all of you. So uh, an exciting event happened yesterday and today. We'd like to call a few people up. Uh, Mr. Daniel Squire, if you're here today, will you please come up and get your, your certificate of successful completion of exam? I knew I should have brought the Tennessee guy out and said you. Okay. Um, Nathan Andrews, are you present this afternoon? If so, come on up for some paperwork. Keep going. Um, we'll also invite up to the front, Valerie, Valerie, I know you're here somewhere, John Simons, if you're here, please come up for some paperwork as well, sir, Robert Chappell, I know you're here, where are you, my friend, hey. come on up here, from Washington State, Robert came down with some friends, spent in the week with us here at Quartz Fest, and obtained his technician license just this morning, David Durflinger, are you here, sir? Please come on up. The nation's newest amateur extra operator, right here. This license will reflect that the flat database. Jeffrey McSpaden. Um, McSpaden. Um, next, Barb. I saw you. This one's special. This one's special. Barb was elated yesterday, and uh, what? What? Uh, what? How exciting! So exciting. Hey, Barb. 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 She was one of the people I tested on the road. Congratulations. All right. Raymond, how are you here today? Raise your hand so we know if you're here or not. Come on up, Raymond, please. Okay, we, not that we saved the best for last. This actually was an accident. Um, he passed all three exams this morning with us. And his amateur extra. So congratulations, sir. As a retread, you're coming back into the hobby, and it can't be a better time. Russia, Asiatic Russia, Hawaii, Brazil, uh, Western Sierra, France, South Korea, Australia, South Africa, Angola, Malawi, China, Indonesia, Estonia, Uruguay, India, Ukraine, 
and that's part of it. So I'm really impressed. We got some obviously some reactions here. That's what our club's all about. Every time you enter, you get a chance to win the stepper antenna, the one that's above the uh, trailer, the special event trailer, and eighteen hundred dollars. So even if you work uh, Canada. You have to work something in the way of a DX entity outside of the continental USA. So if you work Canada three times in three days, you're in there for three entries for that antenna. So to give you some results, we have the Biano batteries and the chargers that we're giving out for the winners of the first day. And I will uh, announce those here in a minute. Okay, I'm going to start with the uh, special event trailer. Uh, using the Comet vertical that we have set up out there, we bought for our club as a quick deploy antenna. I wasn't sure how well that would work out, but somebody with the call sign of Kilo Oscar 4 Yankee India November. Lori, are you here? There she is. Lori made the longest contact the first day. I'm, I'm kind of reluctant to tell you the distance of all these because it might discourage someone. Um, pardon? She worked uh, Angola. The next one in the class is uh, Class C QRP. Uh, this person also worked Angola, and it's November 6th, uh, Golf Echo Oscar. George, are you here? Nice work, congratulations. And Class B is the uh, FT-8, and surprisingly we didn't hear. Uh, FT8 was not really the largest amount of applicants for this contest. And I love this one because the, the contact was made using a ham stick. And I can tell you it's the longest of all four categories. And we'll uh, Kilo, Charlie 5, Quebec Oscar, Charlie come in. Uh, John, are you here? Some dress on the ham stick. So don't think you have to have a big antenna to, to do this. Congratulations. Bill Mater, are you here? Kilo 8 Tango Echo? Congratulations, Bill, and thank you. And uh, here's the trap typo. So that's beginning, and you got to remember BioNO. Look who I found. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. You do, sit here and yeah, he's got his too. Yeah, yeah. camera, and camera. There yeah. You <laughs> what are you doing, Randy? You're going good, Bert. <laughs> yeah. Jerry, you go camping and you bring. This is essential camping gear when you come out to Portsite. You have to have your Tektronics mixed domain oscilloscope, RF, that can be triggered from digital inputs. Wow. Plus. You know, can do a logic analyzer. It's everything you need for your quartzite camping needs. I saw none of these $500 Chinese scopes. Huh? Chewy, chewy. <laughs> yeah, Chinese made American scopes, <laughs> yeah. I assume. Cool. Yeah. Where was this? We have another project here. There's a 40 meter ham stick, radials all over the ground. They got it resonant. But the SWR is like two to one, so that's more like a hundred ohm impedance. So they're they're fiddling with a coil here now. Wand on some some little bottle. So we shall see. Quiet on the set. Take one. So when we're lowest SWR, we're about up there. 70 ohms. So is the radio happy? Have you hooked it up to the radio yet? Haven't hooked it to the radio oh, yet. Gotta get power out. The radio was not, well I was getting a very high reflected yeah. power, like 10 watts reflected. Mm. 
you know, out of 50. <laughs> so more experimentation needed. So anyway, that was uh, finally got some sun on my panels today. I'm getting about eight and a half amps. Tomorrow should be better. The honey wagon shows up. I uh, didn't bring one out, sorry. Okay, so Barry's got the, the ribs on the Barbie. You can open them up with the sauce. I've got two Barbies here to hold the ribs. Everybody's in dinner standby tonight. Waiting. Happy hour. Yeah, I just want to get them really hot. See that one? Burned down already. Yep. Gotta watch that. Nice bread. Cut the bread. Cut the bread. Butter them all up. Getting them buttered. There's, there's sizzling. Yeah, I'm not getting this warm inside yet. That's why I've got the oil. <laughs> Pleased with how they're coming. Just getting a little extra black because of the sauce. And the sunset tonight. Of course, Fest Rainbow. Jerry and Amy's kitty. Watching the rainbow. Who's ready? Who's okay. ready? Any ones you like? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. How many you want? Four. <laughs> I think that little chunk you're just touching. It's wonderful. Come back for more. How many you want? I'll put a tip jar out there if you like. Beans, beans. Well, it's gotten pretty quiet out here. Everybody's chomping away. Thank you, Barry. Very good. Everybody's busy eating.